Okay, friends, welcome back. Okay, we have uh, D4. I'm really tempted to play E5, but I don't know the England Gambit line entirely. So I'm just going to opt to play Knight F6. Push the pawn. Pin the Knight. Do have a move like knight e4 next. Uh, I could put pressure on this piece. Knight e4, take with the knight, takes with the pawn. Could possibly win a rook this way. If he pushes, I'll just take, I think. This is borderline. I think I'm just winning a pawn this way. I know it's a little bit risky, but I think it's okay. Could do something like try to get the queen out to a5 and then look for something like d4. This is slightly problematic for me. He has a lot of firepower pointing here. Uh, so do we castle or just block in? I'm almost tempted to go something like f6 with the queen. I don't know if castling's the play here. I feel like if I castle, he just um he's gonna be able to start winning these pawns. Hmm. Maybe I castle and then bring the queen out to f6. I think if I go f6, he's just gonna attack the queen, so it's not gonna be great. So I'm just gonna castle. He's probably gonna try to win the rook here, I imagine. I could try to attack his queen. Maybe just add more pressure. Probably bishop h6 next from him. I think if I were him, I would almost just sack the bishop here at this point. I'd actually be really tempted to do that. Since he's got the queen on the g file like that. And the bishop on f4. I need to remember if I move my queen too. I'm going to be losing my c pawn. May not be worth. I'm thinking pawn f5 is the next move, is just continue to pressure his queen. Yeah, kind of expected that. Yeah, so he's trying to win the rook. He does have mate here, so that's that's the big problem. I believe I'm forced to just lose a rook here. So too bad, so sad kind of deal. Yeah, this is just mate. So sadly, I have to kind of lose this rook here. And all of a sudden, my little advantage goes down the drain. <laughs> I 
Maybe that hyper aggressive play wasn't the pick. <laughs> mm. Could he do? Yeah, I think taking the rook is probably his best bet. I think he's just trying to find a way to cut my king off. I think that's what he's going after. I don't know. Probably have to play like e8, f6 next. This game is a uh, lesson in why we develop all of our pieces first. I'm really bad about following that rule. I don't know if you guys can tell. Come on, Kelly Skulls. Wonder if I could have done something different on C3. Oh, why didn't I just take with the knight? Oh, I should have taken with the knight. That would have been the big idea. And then I could have won the rook that way. Interesting. Okay. So he decided to not take the rook. I think his idea here is that the rook is going to get jammed in. I don't know. I think he should have taken the rook there. It just seemed too good. I mean, the C pawn's exposed now, but I don't know. Yeah, I should have taken his bishop on C3 with the knight first. And then when he recaptures, I had the fork. The check fork, and I could have won the rook that way. Yeah, that probably would have been a bit better. I would have had like a three-point advantage at that point. I believe two or three, either two or three point. I think three. F6 is probably, or F5 is probably the next move for me. Unless he decides to move his queen, but. I'll have a nice uh, pawn structure too. Only problem is uh, the bishop is going to have a hard time breathing. I'll probably have to go really. Ah, so he blocks the pawn in. Okay. I see. Yeah, so at this point, we probably have to try to break open the center, but even then, it's pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. I could just attack that bishop. I think that's a fine move. I mean, what's he going to do next? He's probably going to try to look for some cheese down here. But I don't know, I think attacking the bishop is pretty straightforward. 
This will basically force him to just waste a move with his bishop. I still think he should have taken the rook, but that's just me. Okay. Um, probably go harass this queen at this point. Hmm. Which side do I want to harass on? That's the question. The H file or the F file? I'm kind of tempted to harass with the with the F pawn. Um, so if for some weird reason he does take, then I can get my rook out. But I also prefer the H pawn because then he can't really get his queen sort of onto this H6 square. But I don't know, creating this pawn structure just seems kind of good. Um, I don't want to open up the diagonal for his light square bishop though. That's that's my main problem. I feel like if I push here, I'm not really pinning this pawn since it's protected, but hmm. I don't know. I'm just gonna go for it. This pawn structure just seems better, so that's the only reason I'm gonna go for this. That's kind of what I figured would happen. I mean, even then, it's not not a good spot for his queen. The main problem is I need to get my other pieces into play. That's my main problem right now. I'm trying to think if it'd be possible to like break open the F file or something, but I don't know. I'm just gonna play a developing move and hope for the best. Okay, I'm bringing out the big guns. So I can attack his bishop, attack his bishop, and then go for the fork next. Uh, I don't know how he's gonna protect that. Maybe he'll just push a pawn or something. Where's he going to go with this, though? He'll probably come over here, right? He'll probably come over to e5. And some trading might happen. You're just going to play... B4. I like this spot for the knight. I may be going on a bit of a side tangent here with like all these attacks on sort of his queen side. But 
I just want to relieve some pressure pointing this way, and I don't have a great way to deal with these two pieces. Aside from maybe trying to like move the queen over or something like that, but even that just seems not so great. Yeah, I mean, he's weak on the queen side, so I want to pressure him here. that too. Am I missing something? I don't quite follow this move, if I'm being honest. Oh, he's just trying to protect his bishop. Hmm. I'm fine with that. Oh, wow, he didn't take with the knight. Alrighty. Well, I do have the rule of fork, but that just seems really bad. I feel like I should have to just start kicking his pieces around. Don't want to ruin the pawn structure here. I don't have a great square for my knight. Maybe just getting the bishop on the open diagonal. I feel, I feel like he's going to try to kick this next. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, probably kicking the knight. This makes a really awkward pawn structure, but it does let my queen and his light square bishop breathe. Hmm. I just want the knight because I feel like I can use it to sort of harass these two pieces the best in this kind of close position. That's the big idea, but I don't know. It just seems too good to not pick this piece. I, I feel like he's just going to be forced to run back to uh, f3 here. Or g4. He's got a very exposed king, so that's something else I need to keep in mind. Problem is his bishop and his queen are sort of defending the possible ways that I can get there. His queen is very constricted. She really doesn't have a lot of places to go. I 
Yeah, I sort of saw that coming. I, I was thinking about this. And I think he's going to try to look for some cheese sort of down the open file here. But um, I think what he failed to calculate was me being able to get the queen out. I think he was going to try to open up the file with the pawn. But I feel like the queen in this spot is just going to be a bit stronger. It's going to be like a more active square. And I don't think he has a great way to pressure this either. He might try to like uh, pressure the rook or something, but I don't know. It just seems good. Could always move over here if he takes, I just take back. I'm already up a piece, so if he trades off, I don't really care. I can always just tuck my king back onto h8 if he checks the king uh, after he, like, takes this or something. Hmm. I don't know. It's protected, so whatever. Oh, and I can always take with the rook, too, so, uh, since the queen's protecting it. Maybe I should have just taken with the pawn too. Mm. I'm actually okay with that. Yeah, maybe I should have taken with the pawn. Mm. Could pressure. I mean, I could honestly just offer the trade here at this point. And really simplify the game. Taking the pawn though. Yeah, do I take the trade? I'd almost rather just offer the trade. Actually, if he takes, I can take back with the knight, and then I can pressure his uh, bishop here. It's defended. I have to start making some decisions. Hmm. Yeah, maybe going for the queen trade was the better idea here. I don't know. It's got four defenders on F2, so I can't really go after that square yet. Um, I feel like at this point I need to just let my light square bishop breathe too. I wonder if it'd be better to try to get it out this way and then like look for the mate. Uh, so he'll kind of block that in. 
I think is okay. And I can't go g5. He just takes with the bishop. And then I can't take back. And I think I'm forced to go f6 here. This is fine. It's got three attackers there. Mm. Could always just defend that. Disconnecting the rooks. I don't know, but I need to pressure his queen. That's my, my main thing. Honestly, it's probably time to just go for the queen trade, uh, if I'm being perfectly honest. What does that do? Uh, let's think about this. Did you get my rook out? That's the other thing too. Oh, I do just have a nice fork here. Should be winning a bishop. I think that is just a free pawn, right? Yeah, I should be winning the bishop, and then maybe I don't care so much about the knight here anymore. I guess I could always just move the rook over and like look for mate in one. But I don't know. Taking the free pawn seems really good. And then it's the fork on the rook and the bishop. Yeah, maybe I should have just went like a uh, rook g7 a long time ago. Just looked for the mate. He has a lot of easy ways to protect it, though. Need to remember this protection on this pawn here. Also, I could just push this pawn up uh, to uh, c5 at this point. Double up the rooks or something. Hmm. I believe that wins me a rook. Wins a rook, doesn't it? Mm. 
What am I really losing by taking this rook? I can block it in so easily if he decides to check me. I don't know, taking the rook just seems too good. Being up 10 points in material. I want to make sure I can't get mated anyway here. My king's on a light square. The dark square bishop's not really a threat. If he checks, I just either come back or... Yeah, I mean, I can just block in. I don't know. It just seems too good. Yeah, okay, so I saw that coming. So I can either block with the queen, which seems like the reasonable thing to do, or I can just block in with the rook, and then win a bishop, check. I kind of like the bishop, take the bishop check route. <laughs> but I do like the idea of sort of doubling these up, but I don't know. That just seems too easy. I can just trade off queens here, and then I should just be winning the pawn race too. Ah, oh, damn, that's a move. Yeah, that's a good move. Okay, I might be getting into some hot water here, but... Yeah, he wins this... Uh, no, even if he tries to take this pawn, I just take back. This is where not developing my pieces has uh, got me into a little bit of hot water. Not too much, but... Yeah, I should have traded off a long time ago. My main problem here is that my bishop is kind of pinned. So. And this knight's protecting this pawn, which I do like. I wonder if there's like some rook sacrifice idea here. I can sack the rook and then fork him next. Sack the rook and then fork. Should be able to just win, I think. I think if I sack the rook, um, I can get check and then win this uh, bishop back, or at the very least win a rook. Mm. Yeah, I'm just going to try it. At the very least, I can win this bishop. And then I think I can still make a comeback. You are a sneaky fella. 
Hmm. Well, the nice part is I should be winning a rook here. Hmm. I could win a rook at the sort of expense of... His bishop is pinned, so I could win a rook. That would be pretty nice. I think I'm going to lose my own rook in the process. Yeah, I'm just going to go for it. Maybe I can find some mating pattern here too. Can't quite protect that. And is he gonna have like a nasty check on like e7 though? That I won't be able to do anything about. Yeah, maybe I have to protect e7, but yeah, taking the rook, I don't know, seems too good. I'm only gonna be up two points if I do that. I really need to like tra trade the queens off. My main problem at the moment. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think he has like e7 check, and I'm gonna be. I think worst case scenario, we'll just like trade queens off on g8 or something. Yeah, if he takes this knight, I find check, and then I take the queen. Okay, so I was expecting that. I don't think he can find mate here. I think that's his problem. He can win this pawn at best. Um, if he wins the pawn, I take the bishop. Um, I have check if he takes, and I can get my rook out. And I should be in good hands. Yeah, fortunately, my queen's protecting e8 here. I think that's his other valid check. If he goes d8, I can run, I believe. Yeah, if I go back here, he checks, and then I can just block in. So I'm like more than happy to trade at this point. Kind of getting low on time here. He's being very hesitant with taking the knight. I think he sees the I think he sees the check. Okay, so I'll just block. Sneaky, sneaky. Just get onto light squares. One less thing to worry about. Two very inactive pieces. That's been the bane of my existence this game. Yeah, so these pieces were inactive this whole game just because of that misplay on c3 with the knight and the bishop. That's kind of how we got to this point. <laughs> uh, he'll probably take the knight here, I, I imagine. 
Oh, so this is fine. This will just let me get my bishop out. Um, take his in the process. Uh, so it's going to be very, very difficult for him to win this pawn. Three pawn. I can basically just run any of my pawns up the board at this point. Yeah, I'll just trade everything off. It's fine. Yeah, cool. Yeah, GG, man. I know it's not over, over, but, you know, it's getting pretty close. I'll just run a pawn up the board. I will, okay, so I kind of want to make sure that I don't stalemate, so I'm just, um, I want to put my, I'm almost tempted to just, like, give him a bishop, to tell you the truth, and just do it the simple way. Now, I'm not doing this to, like, troll him or anything. I'm just doing this so I don't get a stalemate um, in a really, really silly way. Because uh, that has happened to me a time or two, so. Like, I was trying to give him the piece, but he just didn't want it. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to block this piece in just so I don't even have to think about it. I know some of you guys might give me a hard time about like why I'm not just ending the game sooner, but it really just comes down to not wanting to stalemate. That's really all I'm going for here. I just don't like playing games so long, like burning 45 minutes on a game and then losing to stalemate. And also, I'm kind of in the opinion that you know, the opponent should more or less just resign if they've gotten to this point. But that's just me. That's neither here nor there. Do I actually just stalemate? If I get here, no, because he can just move over. Right, he can just go over to c2. And then there should be a fairly straightforward uh, mating pattern here. And I'm going to reiterate, I'm not doing this to troll. I'm just doing this to not stalemate. And I'll probably just ladder him. I'm going to block in this bishop so I don't have any shenanigans. I'm just going to cut this off and give myself some insurance. Yeah, what do you guys think? If you're down 21 points of material, should you resign? Just wondering. <laughs> I don't know what the proper etiquette is. GG. Yeah, is there an etiquette in chess about when to resign? <laughs> well, very even game. Percentage-wise, 76 for 76. Three great moves, one great move. Looks like he just made a couple extra blunders. Uh, okay, cool. Let's do like a five-minute review. This video's been pretty long, so... Uh, looks like I... Oh, looks like he blundered there. Okay. okay. So book moves, book moves, good move. Yeah, taking with a knight. I know a lot of you guys are going to give me crap about this.
but that wins a rook. Oh, and then what is he forced to do? Run back. Yeah, so I could have been up three from the start of the game. But even then, I'm like in a very undeveloped position. He's already got pieces out, so it would just be something to consider. Yeah, I'll need to remember that if I ever run into this again. Uh, this is the second game where I've made that mistake. And I need to just not make that mistake. Um, I think what confuses me about this is that uh, when I see this, it's not mate, whereas the bishop was mate. So it was forced because uh, I think here he does still have the option to like make other moves, you know. Oh, but even no, like even then he couldn't do that because that would just lose a queen. Yeah, so never mind. So anywhere I move this knight, it would be a check if he decided to not take it. Right. Okay. 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 So some mistakes were made there, but castling was not the play here. I wasn't sure about g6, but looks like that was the right move. And I'm really shocked that he just didn't take. I don't know. This just seemed better. Um, he would have been up up a point, so it seemed like it was silly to not take that. This ignores an opportunity to connect rooks. This permits your opponent to kick a knight. Right. Yeah, I, I imagine he was expecting the pawn to come out like this, and I think he would have been looking for some h-file mate stuff uh, but he probably just failed to recognize that the queen was defending that knight um i wasn't quite sure but what does the engine recommend yeah queen takes yeah keeping the pawn on this file is valuable i feel and e4 was good yeah i should have taken um failed to recognize that that was my bad I did see that I could win a pawn there, though, because the queen was protecting e4. Yeah, this was a bit of a blunder. This just permitted the fork. Looks like taking the rook was the right idea there. I failed to recognize that he was going to be checking on the back rank, though. So, and at this point, I wish I would have just developed my bishop anywhere um, to prevent that. So that was dumb of me. Sacking the rook. Well, sacking the rook was the play. Oh, and then sacking the bishop too. Wow. Why so? Mate to nine. Oh, wins a rook. Oh, would not have seen that. Interesting. Queen g5, bad idea. Also bad idea. Oh, sure. So just any check, really. Oh, so that's the idea, is because it wins a queen. Ah, right, 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 right. Ah, I should have noticed that a long time ago. <laughs> Well, even better. Check. And then he's forced to move and then takes the queen. Oh, so this could have been over a long time ago. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Check. Sack the bishop. Take the queen. Take the rook. Wow, this could have been over so much faster. Okay. Okay. Well, wow. I feel so dumb now. Well, no reason to go through the end of it. It was basically over at this point, but uh, well, wow. so that was the main takeaway was my rook was x-raying his queen and then I was really just like one bishop move away from winning that queen and his rook. So that was a really big oversight. That was a really big blunder, really big tactical blunder on my end. Um, yeah, I was just trying to give up the the bishop here. I think he didn't take this because he was probably hoping for some stalemate um, possibilities with this. But uh, cool, yeah, GG. Kelly, how do you how do you say this? Kelly Slocks.
from Switzerland, right? Switzerland and GG. And uh, see you guys in the next game.